guys welcome back to my channel so in today's video we will be looking into az104 practice question and answers part 3 so i have already shared part 1 and part 2 where you can find more practice question and answers so you can go through those parts and refer to them and uh, practice those uh, question answers as well so without any further ado let's get started with the question and answers so let's look into question number 21 so question number prior to question number 21 uh, from question number 1 to 20 can be found in part 1 and part 2 so you can refer to those uh, videos as well i'll leave the link in the description box so the question it says question number 21 note the question is included in the number of questions that depicts the identical setup however every question has a distinctive result establish if the solution satisfies the requirements so this is a question and we will have certain questions a number of questions similar questions but a solution will be provided to this particular question so we have to tell that whether the solution meets the goal meets the requirements or not so the question goes this way your company's azure subscription includes two azure networks named virtual network a and virtual network b virtual network a includes a vpn gateway that is configured to make use of static routing also, a site-to-site -site VPN connection exists between your company's on-premises network and virtual network A. You have configured a point-to-site VPN connection to virtual network A from a workstation running Windows 10. After configuring virtual network pairing between virtual network A and virtual network B, you confirm that you are able to access virtual network B from the company's on-premises network. However, you find that you cannot establish a connection to virtual network B from the Windows 10 workstation. You have to make sure that a connection to virtual network B can be established from the Windows 10 workstation. So the solution for this problem that is being provided is you choose the allow gateway transit setting on virtual network A. So does the solution meet the goal or not? So you have to select yes or no for the answer over here. And the correct answer is B that it does not satisfy the goal. It does not meet the goal so choosing the allow gateway transit setting on virtual network a is related to allowing traffic to flow through virtual network a to reach resources and other virtual networks that are connected to it via peering it doesn't directly address the issue of establishing a connection to virtual network b from the windows 10 workstation also i'll leave all the reference links so you can go back and read more about it whatever questions we are discussing and the solution to those questions so now let's look into question number 22. Okay, so question number 22, it says, uh, so it is in the same series question and it gives the solution as you choose the allow gateway transit setting on virtual network A and does the solution meet the goal? And the correct answer is no, it will not meet the goal. Uh, making changes to gateway transit setting will not meet the goal of uh, doing the scenario that is being written in this question as part of the question now let's look into question number 23 so this is a similar question but we have a different solution over here so now the solution it says that you can download and reinstall the vpn client configuration package on windows 10 workstation does the solution meet the goal yes or no and the correct answer is yes and for that i'll leave the link in the description box the reference you can go through the documentation of azure and try to understand like why the correct solution is yes now let's look into question number 24 this question says your company has virtual machines vms hosted in microsoft azure the vms are located in a single azure virtual network named vnet1 the company has users that work remotely the remote workers require access to the vms on vnet1 you need to provide access for the remote workers what should you do you should configure a site to site vpn you should configure a vnet to vnet vpn configure a point to site vpn then configure direct access on a windows server 2012 server vm option e configure a multi-site vpn and the correct answer is c you need to configure a point to site vpn gateway connection which lets you create a secure connection to your virtual network from an individual client computer now let's look into question number 25 so this question is a similar question uh, a solution will be provided and a goal need to be achieved by that particular solution so the question it says your company has a microsoft sql server always on availability group configured on their 
Azure Virtual Machines, you need to configure an Azure internal load balancer as a listener for the availability group. Solution you provide is you create an HTTP health probe on port 1433. So does this meet the solution, uh, meet the goal? The solution does it meets the goal uh, and the correct answer is no creating an http health probe on port 1433 is not the correct approach for configuring an azure internal load balancer as a listener for sql server always on availability group and now let's look into the next question question number 26 so the question remains the same and the solution has changed so your set session persistence to client ip so does the solution meet the goal and the correct answer is no setting session persistence to client ip on an azure internal load balancer is not the correct approach to configure it as a listener for sql server always on availability group now let's look into question number 27 uh, so the solution uh, okay so it is a similar question so the answer is no we have already looked into it so now we have a different solution for that particular question and now the solution is you enable floating ip and the correct answer is yes this meets the goal that we are trying to achieve the solution of creating or enabling the uh, floating ip so enabling the floating ip setting on azure internal load balancer is one of the key steps to configuring it as listener for sql server always on availability group when you enable floating IP, it allows the ILB to effectively float between the backend SQL Server instances, ensuring that incoming connections are directed to the active SQL Server node within the availability group. This is a critical part of setting up a listener from an always on availability group to ensure that client connections are routed to the correct active node. Now let's look into question number 28. So this question, it says your company has two on-premises servers named SRV01 and SRV02. Developers have created an application that runs on SRV01. The application calls the service on SRV02 by IP address. You plan to migrate the application on Azure Virtual Machines. You have configured two VMs on a single subnet in an Azure Virtual Network. You need to configure the two VMs with in static internal IP addresses. What should you do? And your options are A, run the new Azure R RM VM config PowerShell CMDLet. B, run the set Azure subnet PowerShell CMDLet. C, modify the VM properties in the Azure management portal. D, modify the IP properties in Windows uh, network and sharing center. E, run the set Azure static VNet IP partial CMDLet. And the correct answer is E, specify a static internal IP for a previously created VM. So basically run the set Azure static VNet IP partial CMDLet. So you can go through the description, you can pause the video and you can go through the description. Now let's look into question number 29. So your company has Azure Active Directory subscription. You need to deploy five virtual machines to your company's virtual net sub network subnet. The VMs will each have both a public and private IP address. Inbound and outbound security rules for all of these virtual machines must be identical. Which of the following is the least amount of network interfaces needed for this configuration? And your options are A, 5, B, 10, C, 20, D, 40. And the correct answer is A, 5. Now let's look into question number 30. So question number 30 says, your company has an Azure Active Directory, Azure AD subscription. You need to deploy five virtual machines to your company's virtual network subnet. The VMs will each have both a public and private IP address. Inbound and outbound security rules for all of, the, all of these virtual machines must be identical. So which of the following is the least amount of security groups needed for this configuration? Your options are A4, B3, C2 and D1. And the correct answer is D1. So to achieve the described configuration with five virtual machines, each having both a public and private IP addresses and identical inbound and outbound security rule, you would need a total of one security group. Now let's, let's move on to the next question. Question number 31. Your company's Azure subscription include Azure virtual machines that run on Windows Server 2016. One of the VMs is backed up every day using Azure Backup Instant Restore. 
when the vm be- becomes infected with data encrypted ransomware you decide to recover the vm's file which of the following is true in this scenario and the options are a you can only recover the files to the infected vm you can recover the files to any vm within the company subscription you can only recover the files to a new vm you will not be able to recover the files and the correct option is c you can only recover the files to a new vm let's look into question number 32 so your company's azure subscription includes azure virtual machines that run on windows server 2016 One of the VMs is backed up every day using Azure Backup Instant Restore. When the VM becomes infected and data encrypted in ransom, you are required to restore the VM. Which of the following actions should you take? And the correct answer is C. You should restore the VM to a new Azure VM. Question number thirty-three. You administer a solution in Azure that is currently having performance issues. Okay, I also noticed that thirty-one and thirty-two was a repetition, but Okay, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead with question number thirty-three. So you administer a uh, administer a solution in Azure that is currently having performance issues. You need to find the cause of a performance issues pertaining to metrics of the Azure infrastructure. Which of the following is the tool you should use? A. Azure Traffic Analytics. B. Azure Monitor. C. Azure Activity Log. D. Azure Advisor. And the correct option is B. You should make use of Azure Monitor metrics in Azure Monitor are stored in a time series database which is optimized for analyzing time stamp data so this makes metrics particularly suited for alerting and fast detection of the issues question number 35 so your company has an Azure subscription that includes a recovery services vault you want to use azure backup to schedule a backup of your company's virtual machines to the recovery services vault which of the following vms can you backup Choose all that apply, and the options are A VMs that run Windows 10, B VMs that run Windows Server 2012 or higher, C VMs that have not been shut down, D VM that run Debian 8.2 plus, E VMs that have been shut down. And the correct answer is all of them. All of them look like a correct option, and uh, You can go through the explanation of why these are the correct answer, and also the reference I'll leave in the description box. Now let's look into question number thirty-six. So this question is again a series of questions, and you will be provided with the solution, and uh, you will be asked to check that whether it provides the correct solution, which meets the goal or not. So the question is. You have an Azure Active Directory tenant name console.com. You have a CSV file that contains the names and email address of 500 external users. You need to create a guest user account in console.com for each of the 500 external users. Solution: You create a PowerShell script that runs the new Azure AD user CMD let for each user. Does this meet the goal? And the options are yes and no. And the correct answer is B. No, it does not meet the goal. Creating a PowerShell script that runs the new Azure AD user CMD let for each user will not help us achieving the goal that is being given over here. Now let's look into the question number thirty-seven. So the same question and the solution that is provided is from Azure AD in the Azure portal. You use bulk create user option. Does this meet the goal? And the correct answer is B. Instead, use the new Azure ADMS invitation CMD let, which is used to invite a new external user to your directory. Now let's look into question number thirty-eight, and the solution that is being provided is: you create a PowerShell that runs the new Azure DMS invitation CMD let for each external user. Does this meet the goal? And the answer is yes. I already specified in question number thirty-seven that this has to be the correct answer. So yes, the answer, the solution that is being provided, it meets the goal. So using the new Azure AD MS invitation CMD let, which is used to invite a new external user to your directory, you can meet the goal that is being provided in this particular question. Now let's move on to question number thirty-nine. Question number thirty-nine. It says you have an Azure subscription that contains an Azure Active Directory tenant named console.com and Azure Kubernetes service cluster named AKS One. 
An administrator reports that she is unable to grant access to AKS1 to the users in that domain. You need to ensure that access to AKS1 can be granted to the domain users. So what should you do first? Option A is from Contoso.com, uh, uh, modify the organization relationship settings. B, from that domain, create an OAuth 2.0 organization authorization endpoint. Option C is recreate AKS1. D is from AKS1, create a namespace. And the correct answer is B, to ensure that access to AKS can be granted to the users of Azure Active Directory tenant, you should perform the following steps. So the correct answer is B from consco.com, create an OAuth 2.0 authorization endpoint. So creating an endpoint in the Azure AD tenant will allow users to authenticate and obtain the necessary tokens to access AKS1 securely. This is a crucial step in setting up an authentication and authorization for AKS. Now let's move on to question number 40. So you have a Microsoft 365 tenant and an Azure Active Directory tenant named the domain console.com. You plan to grant three users named user1, user2 and user3 access to a temporary Microsoft SharePoint document library named library1. You need to create groups for the users. The solution must ensure that the groups are deleted automatically after 180 days. Which two groups should you create? Each correct answer presents a complete solution. Note each correct selection is worth one point. So this will be worth one point. And the options are A, a Microsoft 365 group that uses the assigned membership type. B, a security group that uses the assigned member type, membership type. C, a Microsoft 365 group that uses the Dynamic user membership type. D, a security group that uses the Dynamic user membership type. E, a security group that uses the Dynamic device membership type. And the correct option is A and C. So basically, you can set an expiration policy only for Office 365 groups in Azure Active Directory. So you can go through the uh, explanation that is being provided. You can pause the video and you can go through the explanation that is provided that why A and C is the correct answer. So now let's look into question number 41. So question number 41, it says you have an Azure policy as shown in the following exhibit. So there is an Azure policy that is present that is shown in the diagram. Then what is the effect of the policy? You are prevented from creating Azure SQL servers anywhere in subscription one. You can create Azure servers in console RG1. You are prevented from creating Azure SQL servers in Contoso RG1 only. And then you can create Azure SQL servers in any resource group within the subscription one. And the correct answer is B. You are prevented from creating Azure SQL servers in Contoso RG1 only. Because it says the exclusions over here. So that's why you are prevented from creating the SQL Server in console RG1 only. Now question number 42. So you recently created a new Azure subscription that contains a user named admin1. Admin1 attempts to deploy an Azure Marketplace resource by using an Azure Resource Manager template. So the, uh, admin1 is going to use ARM template in order to deploy a resource. Then admin1 deploys the template by using Azure PowerShell and receives the following error message. So it tries to uh, deploy the template by using the PowerShell and the following error is something that appears for the admin one. So you need to ensure that admin one can deploy the marketplace resource successfully. What should you do? And the options are A, for from Azure PowerShell run the set AZ API management subscription CMD let. From B, option B, uh, from the Azure portal, register the Microsoft.mic dot marketplace resource provider c from azure powershell run the set az marketplace term cmd let d from the azure portal assign the billing administrator role to admin one and the correct answer is c from azure powershell run the set az marketplace terms cmd let okay now let's move on to next question question number 43 so question number 43, it says you have an Azure Active Directory tenant that contains 5,000 user accounts. You create a new user named admin user one. You need to assign the user administrator administrative role to admin user one. What should you do from the user account properties? A, from the, li from the licenses blade, assign a new license. B, from the directory role blade, modify the directory role. C, from the groups 
blade invite the user account to a new group and the correct answer is b assign a role to the user so basically from the directory role blade modify the directory role question number 44 so you have an azure active directory tenant named contoso.com dot uh, on microsoft.com that contains 100 user accounts you purchase 10 azure ad premium p2 licenses for the tenant you need to ensure that 10 users can use all the azure ad premium features what should you do and the options are a from the licenses blade of azure ad assign a license from the groups blade of each user invite the users to a group c from the azure ad domain add an enterprise application d from the directory role blade of each user modify the directory and the correct answer is a and the correct answer is a that from the licenses blade of azure ad assign a license now let's look into question number 45 So you have an Azure subscription named Subscription One and an on-premises deployment of Microsoft System Center Service Manager. Subscription One contains a virtual machine named VM One. You need to ensure that an alert is set in Service Manager when the amount of available memory on VM One is below ten percent. What should you do first? A. Create an automation runbook. B. Deploy a function app. C. Deploy the IT service management connector. D. Create a notification. and the correct answer is c deploy the it service management connector which allows you to connect azure and a supported it service management product slash service such as microsoft system center service manager with it smc you can create work items in it sm tool based on your azure alerts metric alerts activity log alerts and log analytic alerts Now let's look into question number forty-six. So it says you sign up for Azure Active Directory Premium P two. You need to add a user named Adwin one at contoso dot com as an administrator on all the computers that will be joined to Azure AD domain. What should you configure in Azure AD? And the options are a device settings from the devices blade, b providers from the MFA server blade, c user settings from the users blade, d general settings from the group blade. And the correct option is A. When you connect a Windows Server with Azure AD using Azure AD Join, Azure AD adds the following security principle to the local administrator group on the device: so the Azure AD Global Administrator role, Azure AD Device Administrator role, and the user performing the Azure AD Join. So this is what happens. And the correct option is A. Device settings from the devices blade. Now let's look into question number forty-seven. So you have an Azure subscription that contains a resource group named RG twenty-six. RG twenty-six is a set to the West Europe location and is used to create temporary resources for a project. RG twenty-six contains the resources shown in the following table. So the resource group it contains the following resources which is shown in the table. Then SQL DB zero one is backed up to RG V one. When the project is complete, you attempt to delete RG twenty six from the Azure portal. The deletion fails. You need to delete RG twenty six. What should you do first? A. Delete VM one. B. Stop VM one. C. Stop the backup of SQL DB zero one. D. Delete SA zero zero one. And the correct answer is C. Stop the backup of SQL DB zero one. Now let's look into question number forty eight. So you have an Azure subscription named Subscription One that contains a virtual network named VNet One. VNet One is in resource group named RG One. Subscription One has a user named User One. User One has the following roles. User One basically has the roles such as reader, security admin, security reader. You need to ensure that User One can assign the reader role for VNet One to other users. What should you do? And the options are A. Remove user one from the security reader and reader roles for subscription one. B. Assign user one the user access administrator role for VNet one. C. Assign user one the network config contributor role for VNet one. D. Assign user one the network contributor role for RG one. And the correct option is B, which is assign user one the user access administrator role for VNet one. Now let's look into question number forty-nine. You have an Azure Active Directory tenant named Console Cloud dot on Microsoft dot com. Your company has a public DNS zone for Console dot com. You add Console dot com as a custom domain name to Azure AD. 
you need to ensure that Azure can verify the domain name. Which type of DNS record should you create? And the options are A, MX, B, NSEC, and C, PTR, D, RR, SIG. And the correct option is A, MX. So the correct option would be A, which is MX. Now let's look into the next question, question number 50. So this question is again a series of questions. So you have an Azure AD tenant named Adatum and an Azure subscription name subscription one. Adatum contains a group named developers. Subscription one contains a resource group named dev. You need to provide the developers group with the ability to create Azure logic apps and dev resource group. Solution on subscription one, you assign the dev test labs user role to the developers group. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And the correct answer is no, it does not meet the goal that we're trying to achieve. The solution that is being provided does not meet the goal. So that's it for today. Since we were on a series of questions, so I'll continue with the series of questions in our next video. So stay tuned. And if you liked the video and if you are interested in viewing more of the technical content related to DevOps cloud, and many different uh, things which are related to technology. So you can consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.